Today, in Washington, the Department of Transportation's Federal Aviation Administration has finalized the first operational rules for routine commercial use of small drones which will help integrate them into the nation's airspace. These new regulations work to implement new innovations safely, spur job growth, and save lives. We are part of a new era in aviation and the potential for unmanned aircraft will make it safer and easier to do certain jobs, gather information, and deploy disaster relief," said U.S. Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox. We look forward to working with the aviation community to support innovation, while maintaining our standards as the safest and most complex airspace in the world," he added. This new set of rules has the potential to generate more than $82 billion for the U.S. economy and create more than 100,000 new jobs over the next decade. The regulation takes effect in August and offers safety regulations for unmanned aircraft drones weighing less than 55 pounds that are conducting non-hobbyist operations. The rules provisions are designed to minimize risks to other aircraft and people and property on the ground. Pilots will be required to keep an unmanned aircraft within visual line of sight. Operations are allowed during daylight and during twilight if the drone has anti-collision lights. The new regulations also address height and speed restrictions and other operational limits, such as prohibiting flights over unprotected people on the ground who aren't directly participating in the UAS operation. The FAA will offer a process to waive some restrictions if an operator proves the proposed flight will be conducted safely under a waiver. There will be an online portal available to apply for these waivers in the months ahead. This is first step in drone regulations. The FAA working on additional rules that will expand the range of operations. Under the final rule, the person actually flying a drone must be at least 16 years old and have a remote pilot certificate with a small UAS rating, or be directly supervised by someone with such a certificate. To qualify for a remote pilot certificate, an individual must either pass an initial aeronautical knowledge test at an FAA-approved knowledge testing center or have an existing non-student Part 61 pilot certificate. If qualifying under the latter provision, a pilot must have completed a flight review in the previous 24 months and must take an online training course provided by the FAA. The TSAR will conduct a security background check of all remote pilot applications prior to issuance of a certificate. Operators are responsible for ensuring a drone is safe before flying, but the FAA is not requiring small drones to comply with current agency airworthiness standards or aircraft certification. Instead, the remote pilot will simply have to perform a pre-flight visual and operational check of the small UAS to ensure that safety pertinent systems are functioning properly. This includes checking the communications link between the control station and the drone. As part of a privacy education campaign, the agency will provide all drone users with recommended privacy guidelines as part of the UAS registration process and through the FAA's B4U Fly smartphone app. The FAA also will educate commercial drone pilots on privacy during their pilot certification process, and will issue new guidance to local and state governments on drone privacy issues. Part 107 will not apply to model aircraft. Model aircraft operators must continue to satisfy all the criteria specified in Section 336 of Public Law 112-95, including the stipulation they be operated only for hobby or recreational purposes. Visit FAA Gov UAS for more information. Have a great day. Fly on, my friends. Fly on.